Welcome. My name is Gloria Galloway, and on behalf of the ladies of the First United Methodist Church in Mayfield, Kentucky, I invite you to share a few moments with the ladies' candlelight worship service. This is our ninth annual gathering. We typically meet in the church, but last year and this year, we have chosen to do a virtual program, which actually means that you can visit us over and over again. The ladies tonight are offering their musical talents, their beautiful music talents, in hope that it gives you a sense of peace in your busy, busy world. Put aside, if you will, the challenges of your job, the household chores, and the routine of feeding, clothing, and getting your children off to school. Don't allow the approaching holiday of Thanksgiving and Christmas to throw you into a hectic frenzy of extra activities. Oh, such as you might say, oh gosh, does my house need extra cleaning? What food should I prepare that everyone will enjoy? Uh, there's decorating to do. There's gifts to buy, gifts to wrap. There's relatives to invite. And as we say here in the South, we need to know that they will play pretty with each other when we're all together. But enough of that. Just curl up on the sofa, relax, and soak in the message of hope, love, and encouragement. Know that you have sisters in Christ who are experiencing the same emotions as yourself. It is my prayer that our ladies offer you a blessing. And I'm so thankful that you chose to spend a few moments of your evening with us. May you truly, truly be blessed. Thank you.
say this mountain can't be moved they say these chains will never break 
but they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe for it from the impossible. We'll see a miracle, God, we believe, God, we believe for it. We know that hope is never lost, for there is still an empty grave, God, we believe no matter what there is power in your name so much power in your name move the immovable break the unbreakable god we believe god we believe for it from the impossible we'll see a miracle god we believe god we believe for it you are the way when there seems to be no way we trust in you god you have the final say you are the way when there seems to be no way we trust in you god you have the final say move the immovable break the unbreakable god we believe God, we believe for it from the impossible. We'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. God, we believe. God, we believe for it.
Our special guest is Clarissa Yarber. She is the minister of the Universal of Holiness Church here in Mayfield, Kentucky. In fact, she has been for the last seven years. She is also the public safety administrator for the city of Mayfield. She has three sons and they have blessed her with nine grandchildren. She said three girls and six boys. So Ms. Clarissa, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening, everyone. As I began asking the Lord for something to talk about tonight, he reminded me of something I used to hear as a younger person sitting on the pews of the church where I was raised. I always heard that the word comes to the minister first and then to the parishioners or to those who are listening. So whatever I'm going to say to you tonight came to me first for me to apply to my own life before I gave it to you. So what you're going to hear from me tonight is primarily going to be stuff that I experienced, which is normally the best way for me to get across a message. And the message that I'm going to bring to you tonight is called Choices. Never before in the history of the world have we been faced with the ability to make so many choices. Almost every moment of every single day, we make some sort of choice about something, some of which are associated with just everyday life, like what's for dinner or what are you going to wear today? Maybe that choice might be whether I'm going to pay this bill or that bill today when something comes due, family business in general. But all of those things need to be handled with us making choices. These choices are necessary for the smooth operation of our everyday living. Each of these things most likely won't lead us to our demise, but some of those choices could put us in a place not impossible to recover from, but maybe hard to recover from. I remember as a teenager having a young man come and approach my grandparents, and that's who I lived with, and he asked if he might take me to a dance that was going to be held at a friend's house. My grandmother looked at him, and then she looked at me, and she said, you have to ask her about that. It wasn't that she wasn't able to make that choice, but I didn't understand that she was ushering me into a place of making decisions and suffering the consequences from those decisions. So that was my very first opportunity at making a choice and seeing how that choice would turn out. Needless to say, the party was nice, good, clean, fun, good local family, we had a great time. I got home under curfew and all was well. But from that time on, there were many, many choices that came about that I had to navigate on my own. I didn't really understand, but later I discovered that it was just one occasion on which I would be walking into that passageway of adulthood and of making many, many choices. I'm sure each of us, looking back on our lives, can find places where we were allowed to make a choice. I can remember going downtown on Saturday and maybe deciding what sort of candy you wanted to buy or how you wanted to spend your allowance and all of those things. And those were choices that seemed very minute, but they were actually practice for the choices that we would make once we became adults. When I fast forward to the day that I found myself having to make some very important choices. When I 
examine so many of the choices that I made in my life. Some of those choices I can look at and say, good job. Some of those choices I immediately understood were probably not the right one for me. But I was already involved, so I had to follow it all the way through. And that's exactly how our life is. When we make certain choices, we have to live with the consequences of those choices and follow it all the way to the end. When I think about the most important choice of my life, I'm sure you can probably remember the day that you also made that same choice. The day you walked down the aisle and took that minister's hand and you told him, I'm ready. I'm ready to allow Jesus to be a part of my life. When I think back to that day for me, I was really young. I didn't fully understand what I was getting myself into, but I was absolutely sure that that was what I wanted to do. At that moment, I was sure. There were many other days that I wasn't so sure, and I went through a long portion of my life living that sure today and not so sure another day existence. But that didn't last for always, and I sure am glad about that. Sometimes we don't know exactly what those choices that we make, where they're going to take us to. But every single day of my life, I wake up and I make a choice. Some mornings when I open my eyes, I find myself uttering words of thanksgiving, words of worship. As I get my bearings and prepare to rise from my bed, I hear my own voice saying, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for waking me up today and for allowing me to realize that I'm still here and that it's time to get up and get about the day's business. I recognize also that the only reason why I'm able to utter those words is by his grace. He allowed me one more opportunity to correct some of the things that I didn't do right yesterday some of those choices that I made that were not exactly in line with what he had in mind. And I was so grateful for that. I never thought that there was ever a possibility that I wouldn't wake up. Have you ever been that person? You know, we just get up in the morning, we just take for granted that, you know, we're gonna be making breakfast and doing all those things that we do when we get up. But as I've gotten older, and gotten in a closer relationship with God, I recognize that every day is a blessing and that it's not necessarily mine to grasp. Only if God allows, only if he gives me one more day, one more day to make a whole lot of choices. Most nights, I don't even go to bed thinking about tomorrow because mostly by that time, I've already decided what I'm going to wear, what we're going to eat. I know what lies ahead me for tomorrow professionally, but I don't know what God has in mind. I don't know who he's going to send my way, who's going to cross my path, who I'm going to engage with from one moment to the next. And I don't worry about that too much because I understand that the one choice I made, and that is choosing Jesus, He's going to take care of all of the rest of those encounters that I'm going to have during the course of the day. When I think of having just one more day, my change of mindset, I think, happened when I made that one choice of choosing Jesus. When I decided that today was the day that I wanted to change some things in my life. That was the best choice I've ever made. I chose him as my Lord and every single morning when I wake up, I have to continue to choose him. I know people sometimes don't understand that as we walk in this relationship, we have to choose him every single day. 
There are days when I'm bewildered and when I'm tired and I wonder, can I go further? There have been days when I think I could just sit at home on Sunday morning in my recliner and drink coffee and just have the best day ever. But that's not what he called me to do. So I have to make a choice. And when I arrive at the church, there are many Sundays I look out and I see people who have a regular place to sit, but they're not there because their choice for the morning has been something different than what I have to choose because I've chosen to be his. Because I've chosen to be a follower, then that means I have to follow instructions as well. And his instructions to me day by day are always about how to make the right choice. Sometimes, and I don't know about you, but I know that I have been, that person who, in my relationship with Jesus, have just become a little bit content with how it is. I remember back when I first began uh, attending church on a regular basis, I was just content to sit on the pew for the few hours we were there, enjoy the service, participate, sing, and clap my hands, and at the dismissal, hit the door, and call it a day. I had given God my reasonable service and I was good with it. But God had other plans and he, in turn, impressed upon my heart some other choices that I needed to make. I think at that time I had what some might would call a casual relationship with God. You know, we were just friends, buds, pals. But one day, that whole choice had to be changed. One day, I had to choose something deeper. And I hope that each of you, at some point in time, will understand that we each have to choose something deeper than that casual relationship we have with him. Sometimes there are questions, and we all could question ourselves and ask deep down inside, Am I really okay with the relationship that I have with Jesus right now? When I think about that, when I ask me, Clarissa, are you okay with this relationship that you have going on with Jesus right now? It's a constant reminder to me to press forward, to press toward the mark of the high calling that he's placed upon my life. I probably could just do a little this and that, but I don't know that I'd get away with it, and I'm absolutely sure I wouldn't be happy in that. I always want to try my best, especially when it comes to Jesus, but that's a choice that I've made. I tell people often about how I came to be a pastor. As I said, I was content in my choice to just be a follower of Jesus. In my capacity as a Sunday school teacher, I was happy with my students and with preparing a lesson plan and getting them engaged in learning about the Lord. But Jesus had something else in, in mind for me. I was really, really happy in that relationship. But as I ministered to little children and then to bigger children, and then to adults, my ministry became something that was very near and dear to my heart, and I was very committed to it. I think my pastor at some point in time must have noticed my enthusiasm for the word of the Lord. So it wasn't very long before she began asking me if I would bring the Sunday message. Of course, that very first day, I thought, it's just a favor, and I can do it. Not a big deal. These are the people that I see every Sunday, the people that I sit beside on the pew, the people that I know and have known for almost my entire life. So my very first Sunday sermon went off without a hitch, not too big a deal, all was well. Little did I know she was preparing me for a time that would come 
not so long after my first few sermons. In a short while, she became ill, and it wasn't that much longer that she passed away. Suddenly, we were a church grieving and missing our pastor. We were a church missing our leader. In her absence, I prayed, God, please send us a pastor. Not only was I praying, but the whole congregation, our entire membership, was praying that the Lord would send someone to lead us, someone to be our pastor. In a few weeks, I received notice that the word had been received. We had been given a new pastor. I was so excited when I attended the meeting, but my excitement very quickly changed because the announcement was that I was going to be ordained to be their pastor. That was about the scariest moment of my life. I wasn't ready to give up my pew. I wasn't ready to give up my seat. I had chosen to follow. What else did I need to do? God had other plans for me, and I had to uh, follow through. I oftentimes tell my parishioners that there comes a time in your relationship with God that you have to put your money where your mouth is. It's easy to talk a good game and say you love the Lord, but do you really love him? And if you do, will you do what he asks you to do? So in submission, of course, hearing in my mind that Bible verse that says that obedience is better than sacrifice, I sacrificed myself in obedience to the ministry of Jesus Christ. It was a choice I wasn't prepared to make, a choice that had been made for me by God, but I was up for a challenge. So I got on board, and that's where I've been for the last mm, seven, almost eight years, be eight years in February. I have no doubt that when I look at how I came to be there, I remember a lady that went to church at the church where I attend coming to my house one day. She knew me from when I was a little girl and she knocked on the door and when I opened it, she said, you know better than this. You know you're supposed to be living for the Lord. I can't imagine that you're just living in here and you're not going to church anywhere and you're just living like people in the world. I heard her out, but when I closed that door, I was exactly like I was when she came. I had zero interest in what she was talking about. But a few years later, I found myself at first one church and then another and then at her church. Oh my, she was so happy to see me. It was amazing that she was like celebrating that I had finally arrived. She didn't know that in my heart I didn't feel like I would be there very long. I thought, I'll be here a little while. I stay as long as I like. I don't want to. I'll leave. And I had that in my mind and in my heart. I believed that with everything in me. But God had other plans. My choices became so teeny tiny as it relates to the things he was placing down on the inside of me. I wasn't able to choose those things I used to choose. I wasn't interested in going the places I used to go. Didn't run with the people that used to be my friends. All of those things changed as I got closer and closer in my chosen relationship with God. I hope that each of you continue to choose him every day, even when you're not sure of what lies ahead. I too sometimes am a little bit bewildered. He doesn't always tell me what he's going to do. Most of the times he doesn't. Sometimes I find myself praying, Lord, I wish you'd give me a clue of what we're going to do. He never does, but he always works it out. And I'm amazed and astounded, but most of all grateful 
that he loves me enough to allow my choice to be enough. He takes care of the needs of all those I love, of my parishioners and of our church. And I feel very strongly that for as long as I continue to choose him, he will choose me right back. He'll just keep doing what I ask him to do, what I need him to do. And those are the things that I really, really value the most. When I made that choice to be a follower of Jesus, God also had made some choices on my behalf. He had chosen me. I often tell God that he can still send us a pastor. He knows in my heart that I'll never feel worthy to lead his people. But somewhere inside, he feels like I am. There's a song that I've heard many times, and the man says, he thought I was worth saving, and you know, he must have because he did. He thought I was worth dying for, and he did. And I'm so grateful for that one choice I made, the choice that changed everything in my world. I know that he sees my heart, and he knows that I will forever choose him even on the days when I'm not sure if I can choose him. And I recognize that there is really no other choice to make. I understand that for me, the choice has been made. And it's a choice that I'm interested in seeing all the way to the end. I want to know what lies out there. I want to know what else he has for me. The one choice that is the one choice that was best above all others was a no-brainer after I got in relationship with Jesus. In choosing Jesus, I chose to follow him. I chose to live by his rules and by his laws, by his teachings. I chose to live life as if I were a reflection of him in a mirror. I chose to love my fellow man, despite how sometimes they don't love me back. I chose to believe that the glass is always all the way full and overflowing with his grace and with his mercy. I chose Jesus because I recognize that his will is perfect. I chose to allow him to rule and to reign over my heart. I chose to dare to be different. I chose to speak in honesty. I chose to see him as the Lord of my life. I know that he is full of blessings and full of grace, and he gives that blessing and grace to me on a regular basis. I chose him. I have a desire for him in my heart. I have a desire to spread the beautiful world word of his love and of who he was born to be, who he grew into, and who he is now, sitting on the right hand of the Father. I chose to embrace the fact that he is interested in his creation. He has a desire to spend eternity with me, and I'm happy about that. When I think about being his creation, I recognize that he loves me to the point that the angels ask, what is this man that you're so mindful of him? Why do you love him so? I'm glad he loves me so. And in that, I want to always choose to surrender my life in any way I can for what he's given for me to do. It all came from that one choice I made some 25 or so years ago. I had made many, many choices before that day, but that one choice was the one 
that changed my whole life around. And you know, I'm so glad that I tried Jesus. I actually didn't have anything to lose, nothing whatsoever. And I'm glad that I recognized that I had nothing to lose and only the best to gain. As I said on the day I went into that church, I had no intentions of staying. I figured that this would be a very short visit to yet another church. But looking back, that was not so. That wasn't what God had planned for me. He had chosen something better. So these days, I'm sometimes unsure, unsure of where he's sending me or what he's going to give me to say or what he has planned for me. But whatever his will is, I choose to stick with Jesus. I'm choosing to make him the Lord of my life. And I'm choosing him every day. I hope you too will make that choice if you haven't already. Choose to make God who you turn to. Choose to make Jesus your Savior. Choose to make him the Lord of your life. And if you've already chosen, see if you're giving him all you've got. Are you giving him your best? If not, choose today to change that also. Beginning right now, choose to give God your very best because he has the very best in store for you. Thank you. Is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold. My hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine, I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark. But I am not forsaken For by my side The Savior, He will stay I labor on In weakness and rejoicing For in my need His power is displayed To this I hold My shepherd will defend I know. 
I've heard you can take what's broken and make it whole again. Well, here's the pieces of my heart. What can you do with them? Cause I can't hold them all together anymore. So I You make all things new. You make all things new. Oh God of mercy and love, do what only you can do. It make all Only you can take 
When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul. Sorry, our counting of the hours. Yeah, I saw. Closer. Closer. Okay. And I was going to, like, when I do, I guess I'll just yeah, step we'll, in. I'll just, yeah, I'll, we'll just kind of, kind of, yeah. <laughs> take three. We're, we were going to be three. a one take wonder, we were, Gloria. We were just, third time is a charm, you know. <laughs> yes, I told Laverne to be here holding my hand. <laughs> uh, give me a 10 second count instead of five. Okay. Okay. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet. Though trial should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul it is well it is well with my soul it is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my fate shall be sighed. The cloud be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall 